I've had a few people asking certain questions about my base and how to use it, and I figured I'd make a quick little tutorial about how I personally use my base. I'm sure there's other ways people do it, um, but I'll throw in some little tips. You guys get to watch me color and just see how um, I intend my bases to be used. So the first thing I do is I'll take the two files or however many files that you have to use. I know certain people have to open, you know, the split files, um, but since I made it, I just have to use the two files. Uh, select all of the files and you want to duplicate them. You don't have to, but this helps you make sure that um, you always have the two main bases intact. You're going to be messing with layers, erasing stuff, copying and pasting, and stuff like that. So you're bound to, you know, accidentally delete something, or maybe you messed up and you need another layer, not enough undo, and other stuff like that. So it's nice to have these two files here just as an in case. I know that you that everybody has the files saved and there's other ways to get them. Um, and I even have it on my PC, I have it on a drive, you know, there's no way I'm going to lose it, but it just, it helps me feel secure. <laughs> so you don't have to, it's just what I like to do. But I'll go ahead and I'll open the main base, and I picked one of my secondary Sonas that was not designed by me, it was designed by Critter Valley, and I'm going to be making her. So I'll go ahead and show you how I go through the process of picking out the layers and then how to erase and whatnot. So she is a dragon, so she gets the dragon base. Um, let me go find her ref, okay. Sorry if I sound a little nasally or a little snuffy. I am sick, as I've said, uh, but it's not too bad, don't worry. Um, and she has those eyebrow dots. Oh, wait, nope, I wanna do eyes. I think the normal happy eyes would be the best option for her. Um, doo -doo -doo. Ears. She has Scottish fold ears. Like that. I think that'll work. I might go ahead and draw my own. Maybe thinking. I think it looks okay. Um, and then for face details, her cheeks, I think they would be teeny work. Small fluff? Small fluff works the best. Um, so I've selected all I can on this file that relates to the character. So now I'm going to go back to gallery, or yep, there we go. Go to the other file that contains the horns, mouth, and, and hair, or whatever files you need to go to. And she has, what horns do I want? I might actually have to draw her horns. Okay, but hair, um, I actually have to draw her hair too. But here, let me show you how to copy from another canvas regardless. I'm gonna take these fangs and you click on the on the layer you want to copy and it'll bring up this little menu. This is, if you haven't noticed, this is mostly for Procreate. There's different ways to do this on other art programs. But it'll bring up the menu and just click copy. So that'll copy only what's on the layer and it's transparent and everything. And then you go back to your main file where you're working with your other layers and putting the, the puzzle together. Click on the little wrench and then press paste. Um, I actually don't want that layer. <laughs> I was just using that as an example. Um, oh, and if you can, I recommend using the symmetry tool on either Procreate on your or on whatever art program you're using if they have it. Um, and I'll go through the process of showing you how to bring that up because some people might not know. Um, 
So you go to the wrench and go to canvas and then you go to drawing guide and that won't be clicked on. You click on drawing guide and pre press edit drawing guide. This will usually have this grid come up first. Um, don't move anything and then just click symmetry and it'll automatically have the symmetry line up for you and this moves it diagonally and this is just so that you can move it wherever you want um, but a good way to make sure it's right where you want it is zooming in so that you can see all the pixels and putting it right in between the two middle pixels um, so that you're sure that it's perfectly center with your drawing. On other programs, it'll be different um, because, you know, I don't, I don't know how the symmetry tool works on those, but the, the pixel rule helps a lot for lining it, regardless, or li lining it up regardless. Um, so now I can go ahead and show you how I personally edit my bases and add my own lines because I've been doing that a lot. You know, I can only make so many options for a base. This is already a huge base for me. Um, but I'll go ahead and just use the symmetry tool when I need it and sketch in what I need. Um, her horns are like this, have little scales like that. Um, and I'm going to give her a little two feet or two furs because the other ones were too big. Um, you know, I'm really not digging the ears. They're just not big enough. They're more for cats. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my own ears too. Um, because her ears are more like this. Yeah, I like that. There's her little ears. Um, and then I actually don't like the horns. So I'm gonna just go like, oh yeah, those are cute. That's cute. And then the little scaly bumps. This is just a sketch if you haven't already noticed. Um, you don't have to do that, but I prefer to do the sketch. It makes it a little easier for me. And then, oh yeah. So the base is kind of big. So if you have to, I would go in and since you have this on a separate file, you can go ahead and delete something you know you're not gonna be using. And then you can have more layers. Um, and then for her hair, I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these numbers. There she is. Um, actually, I'm also gonna. <laughs> this is not a good example. Uh, a good example for using the base is um already like um made layers, but it's helpful for those that want to see how I add my own stuff because I like adding my own stuff. <laughs> so there she goes, or there she is. That's the um sketch, and I'll go ahead and flatten or merge these two layers by grouping them and then flattening the group because this is just a sketch. I don't need it um, for anything else. And then drawing assist and I'll go ahead and start lining, um, which is pretty easy. Um, this brush makes it pretty easy to copy how I did the liner lines. Um, uh, for the base, um, I love this brush so much. And oh, for those who can't use this brush because they don't have Procreate or aren't using Procreate, um, it's basically just I don't know if you can make brushes on your thing, but if you can, it's just a circle brush, and then you bring you, you lower the spacing all the way. I think that's all the way. And then bring up the jitter to like 39-ish or however it looks good enough. It's basically just a, a round jitter brush. That's basically it. <laughs> so, not a complex brush, but wow, does it feel good and look good to me personally. It's 
very, it's sketchy yet clean at the same time. Um, then I'll go ahead, do that. And now since the hair is asymmetrical, I will go ahead and make a new layer and do that all by hand. Or it's all by hand, you know what I mean, without the symmetry tool. And then... It gets a little hard to see sometimes, so if you need, you can bring it down the um, opacity on certain stuff so that you can see what you're drawing better. Just a small little tip. And that's it for the hair. So. Now, the next step is to start erasing, and the best thing to do is not merge all the layers together and just erase what you know is below um, whatever's on top. Like, the hair is the thing that's on top 100%, other than where the horn is. So you just go ahead, erase what's behind the, the hair, um, and make sure to turn the symmetry tool off so that you aren't accidentally erasing that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to turn off notifications. Um, I do not know what I was saying. Um, and since that's all erased, we can go down to eyes and eyebrow, turn off the, the symmetry tool so that you aren't erasing the other side. That's what I was saying. <laughs> um, turn off the drawing assist here. There we go. There's that. I think the last thing we have to erase is just the head itself. Turn off drawing assist. Actually, I don't think I have to, but I'm going to regardless. And then just erase where it's necessary. And voila, there she is. We can bring the opacity back up on that. And now's a good time to look it over and make sure there isn't anything you want to edit. Like I'm thinking I want to edit that right there. Um, I want to make sure that line is clear for the hair. Um, Yeah, I think that's good. Oh no, where'd her TVs go? Drawing assist. Put those back. And there she is. Um, so this also isn't something you have to do. But what I personally do when I'm done and want the just the line art itself, no split layers, I will turn off the background color so that the background is, tr is transparent. I'll go to the wrench go to add and press copy canvas and then that makes it so that whatever is on the canvas including the transparency has been copied so before you leave this canvas undo everything you just did undo all the erasing and make sure that all your layers are intact again just like that um and I prefer to do my coloring on a separate uh, or separate canvas, um, which you can see I already have one started here. Let me fix that up real quick. I have this one and this one done. Ooh, yeah, and also this one. Sorry, I have to hiccup. So now I just go ahead and hiccup, apparently. And there she is. And the symmetry tool is where it should be. Everything's set up. Uh, so that this helps you separate your coloring file and the actual art from the base file itself. Because the base file is huge. It's going to mess up your file size and it's going to be a hassle. So if you do it separately, you have a nice, tidy little canvas just for coloring. Um... So, I know some people like to 
um, color in the uh, the lines to get their colors down or to get the the solid fill down. But I personally just like to use the um, selection tool on automatic, and you hold down on the outside of your lines, and then it'll bring up this threshold. And <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> sorry. And you can bring up how um, much the selection is selecting. <laughs> and you can see all that white there is it selecting the transparent pixels, like uh, those right there, on the outside of the layer. So when you invert it and make a new layer and fill it in, you don't have those pesky gray or colored lines outside of the lines. And there she is. Um, I'm gonna pop over and grab her ref real quick. Cool. And then, bada bing, bada boom, there she is. Um, a lot of people hate the way I color in characters because I don't use the reference option, which if you want to, I can show you how to do that. You just turn on reference and it'll make a reference of the canvas, but you can click image, import image, and slap that on there. And there she is. I don't know why I don't use this. I just kind of like, I don't know why I don't use this. <laughs> for the, for this sake, I'll use, I'll use the reference option. Um, but go ahead and alpha lock your layer. And since this design is symmetrical, I will be using the symmetry tool. Ah, uh, that's, that's one reason I don't use it. It's because I like to just select on the canvas. Um, there she is. And I like to use a smoother brush to color in, but you can use whatever kind of brush you want. Um, and this is one good method of coloring your characters. Is just ignore my dog barking in the background. <laughs> um, just to use the symmetry tool. Oh gosh, I haven't drawn this character before, so I don't know how to draw her. Her design kind of goes like this, and then like that, and then like that. Sorry, I'm gonna get quiet while I'm, I'm trying to figure out her design. Um, there we go. So if you don't have the symmetry tool, on your art program. Another great way to make sure the design is equal on both sides is to just kind of like, here, let me show you. Um, I'll turn off drawing assist for this sake. Uh, let me erase this. So I'll take the color and I'll kind of eyeball where the, the um, what? <laughs> what? Okay. Um, where the half line is right here and just start filling in one half and a little bit over um completely ignore the other half you don't have to bother with that oh she's got a shoot she's got a line right there i might simplify her design and make it just like that instead um so you just kind of eyeball it just do one half. Um, there we go. I'll fill this in. I'm not gonna color this all the way because it's just an example. Um, let's pretend this is the character's design. <laughs> You've completely finished, you know, coloring in this side. You got the eyes and the ears and everything colored in and you can go to the ear selection tool pick the rectangle and once again 
eyeball where the half mark is. That's good enough. And select all of it and copy it. Flip it and drag it until it looks right like that. So that's a good option for those that might not have the symmetry tool. Um, it's not perfect. Like, I think this is down too low. Or not, wasn't over enough. There we go, I think. Yeah. So that's a good way to do that. Um, just a little tip, but since I do have the symmetry tool, I'm going to be using that because I love the symmetry tool. Symmetry, symmetry tool, you are perfect. Um, a lot of people think it's cheating, quote unquote, to use the symmetry tool, which I think is bullshit. Um, I don't really have any other tips for coloring, so I'm probably gonna slap some music on here and just let you guys watch me color. So enjoy. Okay, and I think I am done coloring. Um, so now I can go ahead and get rid of that reference. And now, one of my favorite parts is getting to color the line art. Um, it's my favorite final little detail just to bring things together. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn drawing assist on again. And basically all I do is just kind of grab the color that, that like certain line art is above and I will go ahead and slightly darken the color, maybe shift the hue more red or more blue, um, depending on the tone of the character. In this case, I'm definitely going warm. Um, oops. Yeah, sometimes you don't want drawing assist on <laughs> when you're doing certain things, my bad. Um, and just filling in where it feels right. Um, I have a very specific method I use, which is like, I like to leave a lot of black on the outside. So it defines where outlines are, but it keeps, you know, the details on the inside pretty colorful and 
you know, lighter than you would see it normally. Um, which definitely helps the character pop more. Having less black in the design or in the line work helps make the 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 art look a little less crowded, in my opinion, because just solid black line art kind of changes how we see the colors. In my, uh, well, I'm I don't know the science behind it, but I'm just that's what I've noticed personally. Um, and so does coloring the line art, but it, it helps bring the colors to life, in my opinion. Um, like, you can clearly see the difference when something is col that has, has colored line art and not and doesn't have colored line art. Um, which I will show you in a moment what, how much difference it makes. Um, and everyone has their own methods. Um, you don't have to do it like I do. Some people love coloring the line art a lot more. Some people like coloring it less. Some people don't like coloring it at all, which is totally fine. It looks... I think whatever fits with your art style and your personal preference is the best for your artwork. Um, but this is the difference between colored line art and solid black line art. Which I think it makes a huge difference. Um, and I'm sure some people don't like that difference, which is, that's understandable. Um, I actually think I might go ahead and darken the colored line art just a little bit, like that. Um, I personally love it. It's my favorite, and it brings me joy. <laughs> um, there's not really a good way to explain how to do it. It's kind of just whatever looks good in your opinion. Um, but I like it this way. Um... But yeah, here she is. This is her done. I'll go ahead and show you how I personally do my icons, um, in case you're curious. I like to duplicate and... Um, oh, yeah, I like to put everything in a group together so that when I go to select it, select or go to the arrow, the cursor? What, what is this? What is this called? I don't know. The cursor and move it around. Um, it has the whole um, drawing instead of forcing you to flatten everything and make it worse. Or not worse, but make it low quality. Um, I like to make it big enough that when you zoom out it's easy to see and pick a background color which for her I'm gonna go like a, a green like that um, I like to grab a soft airbrush pick another color and fill the lower half with it go to the wand and and blur it. I don't know how to say that. Wait, gosh. Gauze? Gaussian? Is it Gaussian? I don't know. Um, when I was a kid, I always called it gosh, gosh on blur, which <laughs> doesn't make sense. So I have a hard time saying what it really is. Um, I'll lower the opacity on that a little bit. And... Then I'll duplicate the, um, just the secondary color that's been blurred, go to the wand, and go to halftone, and put it up to like around 25-ish. Um, you can also use newspaper if you want it to just be dots, but I feel like the, the full color will be fine. Um, make it big enough that it won't be too annoying to look at. And then I'm going to go ahead and blur this ever so slightly so that it's not so, it's not taking away from the, the character. And this kind of, this looks nice when you zoom out. Um, 
I'm gonna lower that color a little bit. It's a little too strong. Yeah, I like that. Zooming out helps a lot so that you can look at it as if it were an icon. Like, yeah, that looks like a good icon. One thing that's bothering me is that there's no eye, there's no white of the eye over here, which I know there shouldn't be, but I'm gonna put it there anyways. That looks better to me. Um, and now I'm gonna show you one last thing, and that's how I outline my um, drawings. I will copy the whole group. I already did it once, but I'll show you again because I didn't explain it. I'll copy the whole group, click on the group, and press flatten so that you just get the, the, the entire drawing itself. Line art, color, everything. You'll alpha lock that and make it your preferred color. I'm gonna make it white. Um, and take off alpha lock when you're done. Go to blur again. And I usually, for something like an icon like this, I would go to five or six. But if you're doing like a full body, usually two or three works. Um, but I'm gonna go to five. Um, and then you basically just wanna keep duplicating that layer over and over and over again. Um, you can take your finger on the top layer that you want and the lower layer that you want, or the lowest layer that you want and kind of pinch them together with your fingers and it'll merge it. Um, and then just keep doing that until you're satisfied with how wide it is. I think one more and I'm pretty satisfied. You'll go ahead and go to select, go to automatic and do that other trick I told or I showed you how uh, with the um, selection threshold and that black line is how much you will be erasing in a minute um, so kind of eyeball where you want it to be this will take off all the blurry edge and then click on your layers click on the, the outline layer and press clear and there you go that's how I do my outlines. If you want to do a little shadow below this, you can copy that layer again, slap down or um, alpha lock it and fill it in with another color that you want the shadow to be, and blur it however you feel or however you want. Usually less is better for a shadow. And then there you go. That's another small little detail you can do. Um, it helps make it pop. Um, I haven't been doing that for my icons, but if you want to, it looks really nice. Um, and yeah, so now you can basically do whatever you want. You can add um, a grid if you wanted to. Um, however you want. You could add whoop, not that, some texture. Uh, you could add some cloud textures. Um, you could add snow. Honestly, now it's entirely up to you. Whatever details you want to do are really nice. Um, I've been kind of simple with mine because I just want it to be the I want the characters to be the sole focus. And it's not like it's for like my socials or anything. It's just for my toy house icons. So I don't really worry about any details. But yeah, that's how I use my bases. Um, I'm sure other people have their own methods. But yeah, I hope this helps. If you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Um, bye. <laughs>